All right, welcome, good afternoon. Uh, excited to be up here for this. So I guess probably one of the most talked about technologies here at the show, aside from 5G and IoT, is this concept of cloud and how we could use cloud ubiquitously for all sorts of things. Specifically today, what I want to talk about is how we could use cloud to accelerate 5G design through test. So really, the 5G industry is faced with some massive challenges. Some of these you know, are challenges for everything, time to market, cost to test. The specifics of what 5G brings to this, though, are fairly significant. Let me start on the right-hand side of this slide, so cost to test. Really, when we were dealing with RF-type frequencies, cost to test, sure, the assets had a certain cost to them. But now 5G is introducing a whole new set of technologies. You're talking about massive MIMO. You're talking about microwave and millimeter wave technologies. These are extremely high frequencies compared to RF. You're talking about um, extremely large bandwidths. So what this does is it means you're using a lot higher end equipment. You're losing a lot more of this type of equipment to detect many channels. So the assets go up. But when you talk about the total cost of test, really the capital and the assets weren't really the big part of it. The big part of it was always test time and throughput, especially in high volume, right? Well, guess what 5G does? Instead of having one channel with a spectral density of 20 megahertz, you're now talking about massive MIMO, so you have dozens, 64 channels, 128 channels, and you're talking about, instead of bandwidths of 20 megahertz, bandwidths from 100 all the way up to 800 megahertz for this first initial release. What that translates to is much, much greater test time. So this needs to be figured out. You got the time to market pressures, which is the other big problem. And I haven't touched on it yet, but real briefly, I, I don't think I've, or the industry has seen a standard move so quickly for cellular. So we're already talking about rollout of pre-5G standards led by companies like Verizon, Korea Telecom, you've got uh, China Mobile. They're all coming out with, with uh, prototypes and you could see them at the show. So that's the time to market. And then organizationally, we talked about the technologies required, the new assets, the new things like the millimeter wave. The problem is there's a whole new set of measurements that have to be developed. And these measurements are not being shared across R&D, DVT, and manufacturing. So what's happened is you have a lot of fragmentation through the development cycle. And this is hurting time to market. So these are, these are I would say, significant for 5G. The good news is there's an industry that's already solved this. I'm talking about the IT industry, data centers. In, uh, in data centers, they've had to massively scale the amount of bandwidth that they've been able to handle. They have to do it extremely cheaply with commodity-like equipment. And they have to be able to do this real time, so update this scale in real time. It's not just about the hardware and the data centers. It's, it's also about the cloud philosophies. and there's a, a handful that I specifically want to call out. Abstraction and containerization, it's going to be key. Virtualization, extremely important. And then the benefits you get with cloud are instant updates, instant development. It's, it's almost real time in terms of when you get access to this stuff. So I'm looking at the audience here and I'm thinking, OK, I see how this helped the IT industry, but how the heck is cloud and data center topologies going to help me in 5G test manufacturing? Well, let's tackle each of those two challenges one by one. All right, let's talk about accelerating time to market. Accelerating time to market is a function of development efficiencies. So the first and most important thing you need to do in the test and measurement environment for 5G is you have to do this containerization architecture. Containerization basically means you take your measurement IP and you lock the APIs to it, the interfaces to it. And then you allow each of the connectors between these blocks to be consistent. So once you have that containerization architecture, many people can contribute to the development of this. It allows you to do virtualization and abstraction of your hardware assets. It also allows you, and this is a big one, this is important, 
virtualize the measurement functionality. Once you, once you virtualize the measurement functionality, some really good things happen. One, you could start moving all of the hard IP, the difficult stuff, the challenging stuff, to software. And this allows you to, I wouldn't say commoditize your hardware, but allows you to use more basic level instruments instead of high order instruments. It will also allow you to use data center like technologies. Now I think by virtue of everything being in the cloud, you have access to the data, the analytics, the metrics, all across your flow from R&D, DVT and manufacturing. From a cost reduction standpoint, I think I, I mentioned in the beginning, it's all about lowering the cost of the assets, your test equipment, and the second thing is incre increasing the throughput. In terms of asset reduction, what you're doing by virtualizing functions is you're allowing to use data center-like servers, which are, are fairly cost-effective now from the data center point, and they can actually become your instruments. From a transducer point of view, you can also move to more basic level transducers. So those are the first two you see on the left-hand side, left, left column. In terms of increasing throughput and asset utilization, it's all about the software. So in this case here, with a traditional measurement uh, infrastructure, everything had to be done sequentially. You set up your, your measurements, you acquire, and then you perform your measurement and your test, and then you repeat that whole cycle over again for each of the measurements. Through, through cloud and data center based concepts, what you can do is you can acquire once and completely parallelize your measurements. And that's what you see in that middle top box there. Now by virtue of everything being done in software, you also implement schedulers and optimization engines for your hardware assets. This allows you to increase your utilization. It's a big advantage. So I'm only going to briefly touch on the middle one, but because your entire system, your entire test architecture is in, in the cloud, it's a lot easier to deploy it to other DUTs, other devices, so you can have a, a very high mix environment for manufacturing. And then finally, I can't stress this one enough, but asset preservation is always a big deal. Now that you moved your assets to software, it's a lot easier to keep those assets going for years. So I think the big question is, okay, what are the early results we've seen? So we've, we've started working with a couple partners on this already to implement these cloud and data center topologies. And actually, the results are very promising. So by using cloud philosophies and data center topologies, we accelerated the throughput up to 15x. We got much better device and asset utilization. And basically, because the measurements are shared across your R&D, DVT, and manufacturing, the groups are now able to collaborate and co-develop. So I'm going to say what we've seen, better correlated results, fewer surprises, faster time to market, higher utilization, and higher throughput. So all around, it looking, looking quite good. Any questions? All right, thank you.